What's up guys? So, I get asked all the time, what is the best way to get into racing? What's the easiest way? What's the cheapest way? And there's a million answers to that. A lot of people do autocross. Uh, some people go into SCCA racing. You know, there's, there's a million different things that you can do. But the way that I started racing was actually in circle track. So, uh, I wanted to start a project where I kind of bring you guys along with me on how I got started. And we're basically going to build a race car, go and race it for a thousand dollars total so that's the plan so I ended up picking up this Integra out here 91 Acura Integra already been raced obviously as you can tell it's uh, a little beat up but I think you know all the me all the mechanical stuff is still pretty good on it took a pretty good whack in the side here but um, it's gonna need a couple ball joints I've already kind of looked at it and uh, you know an alignment and maybe some other small stuff but I picked it up for 400 bucks so not a whole lot you can expect for 400 bucks but this already has a lot of the stuff that's gonna nickel and dime you when you when you try to build a car you know like the window net the belts are pretty nasty so I'll probably get some new belts or use some of the ones that I have laying around um, it's already got one inch lug nuts which a lot of circle track rule books say you have to have one inch lug nuts which I don't really agree with any of that but they're stuck in the 80s so what can you do but uh, pretty pretty ratty pretty beat up but mechanically it still works it is an automatic which is kind of lame but you know for 400 bucks um, I've actually raced an automatic car on a circle track before and, and the gearing actually works out pretty well on some of the tracks but so yeah just the basic 91 LS Integra nothing special someone the guy before put a cone filter on it um, doesn't have timing covers which I never suggest but I don't really feel like spending the time and effort to put them on but it's got uh, a pretty new radiator it's got some new radiator hoses um, it runs pretty good from what I can tell so for 400 bucks we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put a cage in it and it's not gonna be the greatest cage it's a pre-bent like pre-manufactured type of universal cage which you'll see later in another episode but the guy before just had this uh, harness bar in here which isn't the safest thing in the world just welded on with no plates or anything not the safest thing in the world, but we're going to do something a lot better um, for pretty cheap that anybody with a welder, or if you know someone who welds, can probably do the same thing. Missing the rear bumper, but you don't need that anyways. It's probably just get ripped off in the first race anyways. But the whole goal here is there is a, I think it's a 100 lap enduro that is in April. So we're going to get this thing going for that and they actually buy the winning car and the price is uh, based on how many cars show up. So if 100 cars show up, it's 5,000 to win. So they'll buy the top two cars and hopefully this will be one of them and we'll build this thing for under a thousand bucks and uh, go out there and try to win. So it's a nice little intro and we're gonna be doing some work to this pretty soon so you guys will see that so on to the work first thing we're gonna do is clean this thing out it's been sitting outside for god knows how long so it's pretty filthy in here it also took its toll on the belts so we're probably gonna have to change those out but what can you do I would never suggest mounting belts like this just through the sheet metal of the floor that is not safe at all. Um, if you're gonna do it like if you're gonna do it without mounting them to the cage at least do it to where the seat actually bolts to because there's actually some structure there. I would never suggest just bolting it through the sheet metal like that. Not very safe kind of uh, just like the harness bar here not very safe. So we're going to change that. We're going to get a cage in here and go from there. So We're going to get to cleaning this thing out and probably ripping out the dash to make room for the cage. 
and to get a little bit more weight out of here there's no weight rule in this class that we're running so um, we're gonna try to get some of the extra weight out of here all right so a little update we got the side skirt off to get the door open which was fun because it was really smashed so I actually had to kick the door open but yeah so we got that one open we're also cutting out the haggard harness bar here that was just welded to the body not very nicely but yep it's the update We got both doors open now. Had to cut the weld to get this driver's door open. And uh, got it looking a little bit nicer in here now. Got all the garbage out of here. So next up is gonna be to start removing some of this uh, tar that's on the floor for weight reduction and to uh, make room for the base plates of the cage. So, and then we'll get to pulling the dash eventually. But little by little. I'm getting there. So we found out that we have a bad lower ball joint on this side, which is under there. So we're gonna get to replacing that. And to do that, you have to remove the whole spindle and press it out. So you get the spindle out, lower ball joint, tie rod end, axle, and upper ball joint. Get all those out, spindle comes out. And here's the bad ball joint. So now we'll get to pressing that out and get it changed. So we got the upper control arm from the passenger side. The upper ball joint was bad. As you can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty wasted. So just had to remove that. Remove the strut assembly and take the upper arm out. And uh, there's a snap ring on the bottom. And then you just press it out through the top. So we'll get that replaced with the new one. And be good to go. All right, we got Dad putting the uh, final touches on the spindle on this side. Just got the new lower ball joint in there and got the new upper ball joint on this side. Definitely would not recommend the cheap uh, shit AutoZone ValueCraft brand. It's pretty much garbage, but hopefully we only race this car once before it gets bought, so. Yeah, that's where we're at now. So guys, now that we got some of the suspension stuff sorted out, it's time to go get the roll cage. And normally I build my own cages. Um, I have a bender and everything to do that, but for this car, it's just gonna be, you know, quick and simple. Um, like I have been saying, this is just basically a one race build. So hopefully I'll get first or second in the race and send the car on its way and we'll be done with it. But yeah, so we're gonna head up and get this roll cage kit from Left Hander. It's, it's kind of a cheesy kit, but it'll get the job done and it'll be a hell of a lot safer than nothing and should be able to knock it out in about a day. So it'll be a, a much easier and quicker way to do it. Um, you know, it's still inch and three quarter, 95 wall tubing. Um, it's not DOM, but let's get on the road and get this cage kit. All right guys, just picked up the left-hander cage kit and uh, just wanted to talk a little bit more about that. This cage kit is about 300 bucks, so that's basically the cost of materials and it's already all pre-bent, it's pre-notched, it's ready to go. All you need to do is find somebody who knows how to weld and you'll be good to go. I would suggest beefing it up a little bit. The way that the top hoop attaches to the B hoop isn't the greatest thing in the world, but if you do a couple little gussets, I think it will uh, you know, double or triple the strength of, of what they have. We'll get it in and, and we'll show you guys kind of how it works and then I'll probably change it up a little bit and make it fit a little bit better and make it a little bit stronger than what it is, but there are plenty of people who take this kit and they just weld it in there and 
erase it and it's all good so just keep that in mind this is a really super minimal experience minimal cost way to go wheel to wheel racing when i first started racing it was with some friends of mine and we literally built this car in the back of my boss's uh house like with his spare tools and we borrowed his truck and trailer and we just made it happen and that car we only had like a hundred dollars into that car it was kind of wrecked when i got it i got it for free and then we just spent a little bit of money on some parts and we went racing i just want this to be encouraging to people to get out there and just go for it go out there and race have some fun you know all things considered a thousand dollars to build a race car and get to the track to go race is nothing that's not even a set of tires, that's not even a set of brake pads for a Pro Series car. You can get out there, you're, you're not going to be going crazy speeds, you're going to be just at a local circle track, but I guarantee you it's going to be the most fun thing you've ever done in your life. So Get out there and do it, um, you know, invite some friends over, have them help you out. Get out there, build your first car, make some awesome memories, make some new friends, and just have a blast. That's what it's all about, just having fun. It doesn't matter if you're racing a front wheel drive, 140 horsepower car on a circle track or you're racing a GT3 at Spa you're st it's still racing you're still going to have an awesome time I promise because I've done both but get out there and just do it you know call up some friends have some people help you out borrow a truck borrow a trailer try to get some sponsors you know like my my boss sponsored us by basically letting us keep the car at his house using his truck and trailer and we didn't ask for any money or anything we just used his truck and trailer, we threw his company on the car, and boom, we had a truck and trailer, we were heading up to the racetrack to race, so, if you try hard enough, people will uh, get behind you and help you out, and just get out there and do it.